Now, today we're going to look at how to query a SQL database from PowerShell. Now, there's a couple of different options. One of them is to do a read table data. But in order to do that, we first need to have the module, the SQL Server module, on the machine. So as you can see, we failed initially because it doesn't exist. So we're just going to go ahead and install the module. Now, if you don't already have the package providers and other parts, you will get prompted. And I kind of noticed with 2019, and I think some of the later builds, 2016, you'll see what I mean in a minute, um, you do end up with the cobbler effect because of an existing package that's part of the build, which has some SQL server components in terms of uh, commandlets. Um, so this can interfere with your install a little bit. Um, but not to worry, you can use the allow cobbler switch to remedy this. So as you can see, this is the lovely error. I haven't had time to look into it, honestly. It's probably something that's easy enough to resolve, but for now, we're just going to use the uh, allow cobbler. Now, while that's installing, I'll go through a bit more detail. One of the things that I like about this is it makes it very quick and easy. If you need to read a table, you can use this simple commandlet. Everything is awesome. What is kind of a downside is you need the SQL Server module to be there, and if it's not there, you have to download it. So later on, we're going to cover what other options there are to do similar things, but without needing uh, the commandlet modules basically to be there. And or if you're creating your own functions um, and consequently modules, how you can do that from scratch rather than having a dependency on this module. So. Let's go ahead now um, and start up the read SQL table. So we're just going to go ahead and do a couple of quick examples. And to avoid it going off the edge of the screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the stuff in as variables so that we have much shorter lines of text that will fit on the screen at one time. So first one I'm going to go with is database. Um, we're just, instead of typing out Adventure Works and Data Warehouse 2017 every time. We're just going to go ahead and simply put uh, the dollar sign database. Um, so that should make it a little bit easier rather than me needing to type that out every time. And trust me, I'm not the best typer in the world. So we're going to go ahead and use the command let uh, read SQL table data. Uh, we're going to give it a table name. So in this case, we are going to read the, uh, what is it, dim account, uh, and that's a table, and we're going to do, we're going to avoid some of the column options, we're just going to go for the database. So in theory, what we want is this table from this DB, and at some point, he says, I'm going to need to add another switch here, uh, which is the instance. So we're just going to go ahead and in this case, I'm going to put the local computer. So I'm going to use the environment variable for the local computer. And we need one more. So <laughs> before I uh, end up complaining about this too much, I realize I've forgotten in this commandlet, one of the mandatory fields is the schema. So you, in this case, we're going to have the default schema, so the DBO. And there you can see we have a, a nice output generating lots and lots of records. Now, obviously, that output is not very usable in its current format, so we're just going to pass the output into a uh, predefined variable. So in this case, we're going to pass it into data. And from data, we can um, pipe it with the format uh, table command to kind of see it in a table to have a better idea of how it looks. Now, this is quite good if you're processing data to kind of get the nitty gritty details of what it might look like so that you can um, manipulate it later. It also means that we can now see the column names and table names so we can kind of go through the columns and say you know what we would just want this bit or that bit. Um, here's another nice example uh, we can output the original um, content and then deliberately drop everything that is not uh, account description. So here we're just gonna push the only account description into data, and then that way when I run data again, uh, you'll see we have only the content of account description. So you can actually filter this down, but you could have also used the commandlet and just specified a column and order. 
but I want to show you that you have many different ways of uh, manipulating this information. Another one is I could just simply go through and um, pick out that individual column. Now, as you can see, if I'm tabbing through, there is no um, column name added. So what I've got to do here is add that manually. So I'm just going to copy paste the column from name from earlier because I'm feeling lazy. And then I have the output. So I could, in theory, use any output I wanted. And if the column name had a space in it, which is unlikely, but if it did, you use the quotation marks to allow for that space. Now, tables are great, but believe it or not, you can't use the SQL table data to get, um, well, views, frankly. So there is a SQL view data, uh, and very similar. Uh, instead of a table name, you have a view name. So we're going to take the default one from the AdventureWorks DB, so that's the view time series. Um, we're going to do, uh, again, just the output from the database. So this would be our AdventureWorks DB. Uh, we're going to go for the instance name, because obviously we need to connect to an instance again. And hopefully I will remember to put the schema in this time. No, I didn't. Oops, my bad. So here we go, schema and DBO again. And again, just like the table, you get the output. Now, obviously, this is not the way we want to view the data. So we can, again, do this in any way we want. So let's pass it into a variable. We're going to call this one view data. We just do equals here. And then we're going to put the output. And I'm just going to add this top, let's say, 10 records. So the switch top n exists in both commandlets. And here you can see we've now got the response of just the top 10 records. And this is a nice way of getting sample data if you don't want to get the whole result set every time and you're just looking to like how it's formatted and check the data individually. So you could also do that in a SQL statement where you say, okay, get me top 10 records or last 10 records. We can also filter that down to the amount. So you can see we've able to cut the just the a column even with the data we have on those 10 records so there's lots of options available now we're going to skip over to the other way of doing this so there are other functions and modules within the sql of um, sql server uh, one of them is the sql cmd so just like the read table or write table you can also just use a straight sql client so here I've got the dot representing it's a local instance to the machine. I've got a database. I can pass all the things like credentials, but in this case, I'm just going to pass the query because I already have permissions with this user. I'm just going to return the server name. So I'll do the at at server name, and then we're just going to pass that and get the response. So this returns the name of the machine and the default column one because there is currently no column name. Now, as previously stated, if you were building functions, um, you could use that inside the function, but then you require the SQL server module to be present on the machine. So if you didn't want to do that and you wanted to do it from scratch, what you can do is the .NET assembly. So this is using the assembly. In this case, I haven't specified a version, so I'm just taking the one that's on the machine. Uh, this happens to be 14 that's running on this machine, so that's the assembly it's grabbed. And that loads the SQL Server uh, .NET driver. Now, what we can do is I can create a new variable called SQL Server um, object. I say this equals a new object. And the object class, so in this case, we're kind of telling it what we want to use as the object. So I'm going to use the um, Microsoft SQL Server uh, Management dot uh, SMO dot server. So this is the full class name. And then the server I'm connecting to. So in this case, again, we're just going to put in local here. So we're just going to put the dot. Now what this allows me to do is I now have a, effectively a connection in a variable. So we have an open connection and I can use that to retrieve information. So just like the others, I can um, tab my way through the, the different subclasses. So if I wanted to, let's say, retrieve the database engine type, so we can see it's enterprise. Uh, let's say I wanted to retrieve uh, databases. I can do that too. I can see what databases are present on the machine. 
Now, that's all well and good, but this does leave us with some limitations. One of the things, or the probably the most common thing that you'd want to do, is run queries. So, the problem here is that there isn't an execution class under the SQL Server by default. Because if you think about it, um, whether you're running it with the other modules or the other functions, commandlets, or even from SQL Management Studio, there's one thing that's always missing. You have to tell it which DB you're running under. And without that, you don't get the execution class. So I show you what I mean. So just let's do a quick example. So we'll go ahead and we'll use the objects here and we'll look for execution and we'll see that there's basically none or at least not in the way that we want so what we'll go ahead and do is we say okay we we'll create another variable and we're going to call this one db uh, and it's going to equal our existing sql server and what we're going to do is say okay but it's a database uh, here we go databases and then we put in brackets the database that we want to use. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use master. I've got no problems with permissions and it's fine for what I'm doing. And then under the database, we can use, again, you see this many, many, many options. But in this particular case, we want to use the execute with results. You can execute without results, by the way, but in this case, I want to execute uh, with results because I want to show you what the output is. In this case, uh, I'm going to put in, same as I had before, I'm just going to do a simple server select statement in order to return the name of the server. And then what will be output, it will be a completely unreadable mess. So the initial output, you see, oh, it's an XML format, it's this, and you're going to look at it and say, well, I don't see the query output, where's my column one? Well, the simple answer to that is, it's in that system table data row that you can't see because we don't have it captured. So we could capture it into a variable, but I'm also going to just say, you know what, give me tables. And it helps if I don't miss the S. So let's try that again, but with the additional letter. There we go. And then we have the output. So the content of tables represents the output from the query. So we can do this in multiple ways. Um, the most common one is not to filter it that way, but to put it into another variable. So here we have the same thing. We've put the full server name. We've got a query. We've got the query results. Uh, so we have the, the full thing written out in a slightly more human readable format. We're just going to take results and then take the tables from it. And you see there's our result from our query. Very simple. 